What is chimping? And is it good or bad? Hello, welcome to In Studio. I'm Ian M. Butterfield. If this is the first time watching one of my videos, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and uh, ring the bell so that you'll get updates and on videos which will help improve your photography. What is chimping? It's the act of looking at photos on the back of your camera, whether that's a quick glance down or whether it's scrolling through all the images just to see what you've taken during that shoot. Why is it called chimping? Well, it goes back to uh, 1999 and a writer, Robert Deutsch, uh, who was writing for uh, Sports Shooter. And he was describing a uh, photographers working at a tennis match. And he described them all sitting there, reviewing their images like monkeys. Now, the modern use of it is uh, refers to people looking at their images going ooh, 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 like a, a bunch of apes. But most say it's any form of looking at the back of your camera. Is chimping a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's not about good or bad. It's about the context. Is it appropriate for you to be chimping in the situation that you are in? And to help you decide that, I'm going to list five occasions when you should be chimping and five occasions when you should not. Five times when you should not be chimping. One, when taking your eye off the action will cause you to miss a shot. Imagine you are shooting a boxing match uh, and you spend your time looking down at the camera. You could potentially miss that all important punch or in a football match uh, during a game or any other context where you need to keep your eye on the camera. That's why chimping at a sporting event is generally a bad thing. Two, when neither lighting nor settings have changed. It's a good thing to use chimping and the information on your back of your camera to help set your, your camera up for the shot. But if you're not changing the lighting or the lighting around you isn't changing and you're not changing your settings, then what good is the information on the back of the camera to you? It's not going to help you change anything. So once you've got your settings right, once you've got your lighting right, then just get on and take the shots and concentrate on building the rapport with your subject. Concentrate on the composition, not on what's on the back of your camera. Three, when you are preventing other photographers from getting their shots. Now this is a bit of a pet hate of mine and I've seen this in a, a number of contexts. Uh, I've seen it quite a lot when doing travel photography. Somebody rushes off the bus, they get into the prime position to, uh, to create their image and then they get the shot and then they just stand there reviewing their images, stopping everybody else from getting a similar shot. I've also seen it in the studio where somebody, uh, particularly in a group shoot I'm, I'm thinking about here, uh, where somebody's uh, taken their images and instead of moving out of the way so the next photographer can get in, they spend the time reviewing the images, trying to work out what worked and what didn't. And it just slows things down for everyone. Four, in an unsafe environment. Now, if you're a travel photographer, sometimes you'll go to places which are not necessarily the safest in the world, where crime rate can be particularly high. For example, uh, in Brazil, you might want to photograph an area that's uh, known for, it, for its crime. In these circumstances, you don't want to draw attention to yourself and you don't want to draw attention to your gear. So don't stand around chimping, get the shot, get the camera put away and then move on to somewhere else. Do not draw attention to yourself by reviewing your images at the location. Five, when you can't retake the shot. And for example, 
if you're going along the seafront and there are waves splashing over onto people and you're photographing that, as I was here in Funchal, you either get the shot or you don't. There's no point looking at the back of the camera because it's happened. You might as well just move on and find the next thing to photograph. It's not going to change things by looking at the back of the camera. So anything like this or somebody jumping off a cliff, then you've already got it or you haven't got it. Time to move on. No point in spending time chimping. Five times you should be chimping. Well, this all comes down to one basic fact. Is the information on the back of your camera going to help you correct an error or help you improve the shot that you have created? One, to check exposure. And yes, it's good to use the back of the camera, particularly the histogram, to check that your image is correctly exposed. And I always encourage people to have the histogram on display and you're effectively using your camera as a light meter. We don't walk around with light meters these days, or not very often, um, when out and about. So we're using the back of the camera as that. And that is a good time to be chimping, to be looking at it, to check everything's okay. And once it is, as I said earlier, then you can just carry on shooting. Two, to check focus. And I'm thinking of situations like macro photography or close-up photography or really shallow depth of field because you've opened the aperture right up. You want to know that your, your image is in critical focus on the subject. And you can do that by zooming in on the back of the camera, on your image, check everything's in focus, check everything is right, because it's so easy when you're taking a shot that you line up, you half press the shutter release if that's how you work or use back button focusing and you might sway just a little bit. And when you've got very shallow depth of field that can make all the difference between, in this case, the front teasel and the back teasel being in focus. So use the back of the camera to double check your focus and zoom in there. Three to check lighting. If you're shooting in a studio and you're working with strobes or um, studio lights, you can't see what that light's going to look like uh, until the image has been created. So that's a good time to look at the back of the camera and to check that the lighting is correct. For example, in this shot here, a film noir night, we're putting light um, from a speed light through a Venetian blind to create a pattern on the background. I needed to look at the image on the camera to make sure that that shadow was in the right place. So that's a good time to be chimping. Four, in rapidly changing lighting conditions. And I'm thinking of two examples here. Maybe you're outside shooting and the, the clouds are coming in, in front of the sun, they're going again and you, the light is changing rapidly. You need to keep checking the back of the camera, making sure your image exposure is correct so that you can adjust for that and that you can compensate for it. Uh, the other example I'm thinking of is theatre photography. We may think the lighting is fairly even across the stage, but in reality, quite often it isn't. So as an actor moves from one area to another, or the lighting changes as part of the production, you need to be checking the back of the camera to make sure your exposure is still uh, correct. And effectively, that's how I work with theatre. I'll take a shot, quick check, and adjust with exposure compensation uh, to get uh, my images correct. That's just how I work. I'm effectively using uh, the histogram and the display on the back of the camera as my light meter. And five, to check composition. Now this is something that I encourage beginners to do uh, because when you start out in photography, translating that 3D scene that's out in front of you into uh, that two-dimensional image that you're going to end up with is not always something you're used to doing in your head. So looking at it on the back of the camera, you'll see things that perhaps you won't have noticed in the, uh, in the scene in front of you. So it's good to check your composition uh, that way. But as you get more experienced, I would always encourage experienced photographers uh, to try and avoid doing that. You should be able to look at the scene and know what you're going to get in camera. I mean, after all, 20 years ago, 
we weren't working with DSLRs then, or a little bit over 20 years ago, and so we wouldn't have a back of camera to look at. We would have to do it from knowledge and experience and knowing what would work. So as you improve with your photography, try and cut down on the chimping for that particular purpose. So that's it, that's my guide to chimping. Hope you found it helpful. If you want more hints and tips on how to improve your photography, check out one of the videos at the end. And until next time, keep making great photos. Bye for now.